In today's video, I wanted to continue from last week. Last week, we spoke about how an energy efficient control strategy that technically you know, saves energy on the chiller um, can result in energy being wasted somewhere else and possibly not having a, an overall saving. So today's video is sticking with chillers. We're gonna talk about um, how resetting the condenser water temperature set point down increases the efficiency of the chillers but possibly not increasing the efficiency of the overall system. So similar to last week's video, if we opened up our chill water graphic on the server, we'd have three chillers running and we had our condenser water pumps and our cooling towers and our cooling tower fans. If we want to do a quick test and, and prove this concept of reducing the condenser water temperature, you could just go there and right click and override your condenser water temperature set point down from say 24 degrees Celsius to you know 23 degrees Celsius. And as that condenser water temperature are dropping, if we're looking at the chiller, um, the high level interface of the chiller at the COP, coefficient of performance, we would probably see that the chiller started to be more efficient and the COP would start to increase. Now again, in this video, we're not actually talking about how we decide when to reduce the condenser water temperature. That's in another discussion. This video is simply about considering the knock-on effect of your energy efficiency project. So if we're looking at the chillers there and we saw the condenser water temperature drop, we saw the COP increase and we're feeling good about ourselves. If we looked over at the cooling towers, we would obviously see the cooling tower fans speed increase. And I guess for those of you that watched the video last week, as I was saying that you're probably thinking to yourself, actually, hang on, he's gonna say the fans increase, and they, they do. So you'd see the cooling tower fans speeding up because we need to reduce the condenser water temperature. So it's put, this is pretty obvious when you think about it, you know, um, to get a lower condenser water temperature and a more efficient chiller, we have to run our cooling tower fans harder. It's, it's not rocket science, but we are generally not considering that. We're not considering at what point as we're dropping this condenser water temperature, just get that sweet spot where we have this maximum efficiency for this type of building, those type of chillers, those type of cooling towers. Uh, a few years ago, probably five years ago, I was in a meeting on a big hospital project. We were doing a, a workshop with the chiller suppliers uh, and the BMS. Uh, I was doing the consulting and the chiller manufacturer said, hey, just run the cooling towers flat out every day, all day, it'll still be worth it. And I was just sitting there thinking, yeah, that doesn't sound right. Maybe it is right, but I don't think so. Whether it's right or not, we have to lift our game up and through our optimization projects, consider the big picture. So just like last week, if you're gonna sell this optimization opportunity to your client, you need to know or understand that you need to check that. So you need to build all virtual meters for the whole system, you know, COP of the whole system, or at least power consumption of the whole system. And, um, and through your tuning process over the weeks and months, understanding that for this particular project, at what point is reducing my condenser water temperature gonna now start wasting energy? Because of course, if it's pretty hot outside, you could have you know six cooling towers, six massive cooling towers, fans running flat out, trying to reject as much heat as possible because we're trying to drop our condenser water temperature to 18 degrees Celsius, which the chiller data sheet tells us is when the chiller is most efficient. Now, energy efficiency projects are a lot more complicated than comfort control projects. So what we do for the last 20 years, which is comfort control, that's all we care about. When you download a comfort control strategy, it's pretty easy. You download the control strategy, and at best, all you gotta do is, is tune some PI loops and get the temperature to be stable, um, you know, not hunting. Or so that's how we sort of tune comfort control strategies. It's PRD loops. But when we go into energy efficiency, we're not tuning PRD loops. The tuning process is that consideration about how all the systems piece together. And um, when you start really getting into the nuts and bolts of energy efficiency, you will often get pushed into a corner because all these different control strategies, as we're changing all these sorts of things, it becomes extremely complicated to try and understand how that interaction flows, you know, from, from the chillers and the cooling towers to the pumps, to the chill water, to the air handling, through the air valves, to the supply temperature and pressure down to VAV boxes and dampers, all these things. 
they all interact together. It's super complicated. So if you're doing energy efficiency, you gotta factor that in. You need to be like, you know, on the ball with this sort of stuff and have a feeling for it. And always, when you do um, energy efficiency optimization, always start conservatively. So like from last week's video, if we're doing chiller supply water temperature reset, hey, just start off with one degree Celsius, download the program, commission it, and just raise the temperature from six to seven. That's it, six to seven, that's all you're doing. And see how you go for a few months. People are often jumping and resetting from six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not, oh my gosh, ten. Like that's that's a huge, that's a huge difference. You need to think about that. So just start conservatively. If you're gonna drop your condenser or temperature down, just do a little bit. A little bit this month, a bit more next month, a bit more next month. You know, set the min-max reset limits where you're resetting between. Um, of course, the strategy is not about you know wet bulb temperature plus three degrees and all those sorts of things about how do we know when to reset. This is just about thinking of the big picture. So guys, if you got some value from this video, please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment in LinkedIn or YouTube, wherever you like. Join the discussion and let's see if we can make a difference out there. See you next week.